Yesterday, I contacted both the chief of police of Austin and the mayor of Austin about the Austin bomber. The chief of police blocked me, that's Chief Manley, and the mayor hasn't blocked me, fortunately, probably because he wasn't involved with the cover-up of uh, the Austin bomber. So what I wanted to do real quick is tell, tell the full story, because I haven't done a very good job of telling the story. Um, so if the mayor doesn't know, I'm uh, one of the heads of a drug trafficking organization and, and weapon trafficking organization. Um, and we primarily in Texas do business with Mexico. So I've been getting stalked for a long time, by, especially by cops. Um, that are mad about the whole we can't bust them thing because the economy depends on the drugs. So um, at the time that I met the Austin bomber, a lot of scary stuff was happening. Um, I, I, I was going out with my brother a lot, which meant I went to bars and um, bars for me is like is like dangerous land because it's like cops that suddenly got drunk and are, are, are mad at me. Um, so less than a week before the Austin bombings, or before I met this guy, I'm pretty sure it was the Austin bomber. I went to this bar um, with my brother and man, this guy was really trying to fight me. Like he was in, I mean, he, he was he was smaller than me. He was really provoking me, but there were two of them. And uh, th that guy, actually, I, I told him, I said, I don't fight people, I kill people. And that was before I met the Austin bomber because I, I was trying to prevent a fight. I was like, well, just so you know, if you try to fight me, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna try to kill you. All right, so I go to this bar and it's next to a CIA base. I've gone there lots of times. I go there all the time. It's kind of my favorite bar. And at that time, I'm quitting cigarettes, so I show up to the bar to go find a cigarette. I'm, I'm, I'm there before people are there, and the only person that's there is this guy I think is the Austin Bomber now. And he's at the bar, he sees me, uh, I see him look at me, I ignore him. I go out, out back, because there's an outdoor area at this bar, and the guy follows me outside. It's kind of awkward for a second, because there's no one there. Um, and, and there's no one outside, I'm, I'm not, I, there's no one to get a cigarette from. Eventually, people start showing up, and I can tell this guy's watching me. Uh, he's wearing a Nebraska hat. He's like five foot, like eight or something. And he's got a big beer belly, but he's not fat. Uh, but he's definitely got a beer belly, a, a big one. He's like 40. He, t he actually told me his age. He tells me he's an explosive expert that works for an oil, ga oil and gas company, that he's from Oklahoma. A week before, I met a guy that was also from Oklahoma who was a white supremacist who said everyone from his town is KKK and he um, was trying to get me to leave with him, like trying to get me to go to his hotel to smoke pot with him, and I was like, there's no way. Um, it's always weird when a guy tries to get you to leave a bar with them. Um, and he, he, that guy was not alone. So that was a week before that I met this other white guy that looked exactly like the Austin Bomber, that was also from Oklahoma, who was a white supremacist guy. But you never really know. Um, what you do know is that I was definitely getting stalked at this time because man, I was, I've been getting stalked over the drugs for a long time. I'm telling you, like when I say that I'm tight with the cartel, like they're like I, I have friends that are like at the top of the cartel. I'm just telling you, like, like I get stalked. It, it happens. It's not just stalked by Americans. It's stalked by people from all over the world. All right, so um, this guy from Austin start keeps ranting, or this guy, this this guy from tech from Oklahoma who's an explosive expert at the bar, can't stop ranting about Austin, Texas. He hates it. Only steers and queers come from Austin. Well, you a bunch of gays out there. And like saying stuff like that. He was he actually did say only steers and queers come from Austin. And he, um, and I was like, well, there are a bunch of pretty girls in Austin. Like, I don't understand like why you hate Austin so much. And um, he kept trying to fight this other guy who was way bigger than him. But the, the, the Austin Bomber guy was with this like shaved head. He looked like a mixed martial artist. He looked like a military guy. So when I, when I, when I talk about how everything was getting kind of dangerous at this time for me, um, it, it might not have had to do with the drugs, even though it might have a little bit. It all, but the, I, what I'm leaving out of the story is that I had just started talking about how I thought Austin, I thought, I thought Donald Trump was being blackmailed by like Jim Mattis and, uh, and Kelly 
and John Kelly and like members of, the, of, of Marine Corps that are involved with intelligence. Cause I was like, why are the Marines in charge of everything in the military? And why are they in charge of everything? In, like they're in charge of chief, he's the chief of staff. Why is Trump picking people he has no way? Why, why would Trump only pick Supreme Court justices that are from Washington DC from the same high school and they're Catholic? Like how in the hell does Donald Trump even know these people? It doesn't make sense he's pe picking judges like that. Um, so I, I, I I, I started to realize Donald Trump was being blackmailed by someone. I didn't realize he was being blackmailed by more than one person or by, by like more than one country almost. Um, and so I started talking about it and that's when I went to this bar and I was talking to this guy that hung out with the, that was with the Austin bomber about uh, Jim Mattis. He was like, well, Jim Mattis is the greatest hero in the history of war. Um, everyone loves Jim, Jim Mattis. Like I, I pledge allegiance to Jim Mattis. Like he was like devoted to Jim Mattis. And I was like, well, I'm pretty sure that he blackmailed the president. And, I, and Jim Mattis is also was on the board of Theranos, which was a scam company that was running around telling people that the that Theranos was doing was being used by the United States military, and they were using Jim Mattis's name. It was not being used by the military. They were just using his name and lying to investors. All right, so Jim Mattis is def, 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 is definitely the type of guy that gets involved with um, private industry combined with being a general. All right, so um, that's not that's not the point. Um, um, I also thought that some people that were involved with General Dynamics, which is a, a, a defense contractor, like some people from the board of General Dynamics were also involved with blackmailing Donald Trump. And people like Lindsey Graham and um, I don't know who else, like certain people that are Republic Democrats too. I thought that Joe Biden was involved with in, 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 in Bill Clinton. And so, and then the Supreme Court is obviously um, protecting the people that are behind blackmailing Donald Trump. So this is a very group effort. All right, so I'm at this bar. I know this is a long story, but I'm trying to explain the situation in which I met the Austin Bomber. Um, this guy comes up to me, and there are two of them, and uh, and the Austin Bomber looks at the shaved head guy when because it's getting kind of intense about because I think that the government is being blackmailed or that Donald Trump is being blackmailed because it's like it doesn't you're, it doesn't make sense that he's picking these people. It's like very obvious he's being blackmailed, and. Um, so I, I, I'm talking, and then, and then the Austin Bomber looks at the other guy and says, you got my back, right? Like they're about to fight us, me and this other guy that the Austin Bomber keeps trying to fight. There's a girl there too. Well, no, the girl was with the Ku Klux Klan guy the week before. It's hard to, it's, things get mixed up. So, um, all right, so um, I'm, uh, I'm, I, I'm starting to feel like they're about to fight me these two guys and I'm by myself with them. And I, I, I told him, I said, I said, uh, well, just so you know, um, if someone tries to fight me, I don't fight them, I kill them. And so like, you would never be able to fight me. I would go straight for trying to kill you. Cause I, I, I assume that you know who I am if you try to fight me because a lot of people know who I am and I, I don't know who they are. So if you try to fight me, I'm going straight for death. That's like the only thing I'm trying to do if you try to fight me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then the Austin bomber got this like scared look on his face and he ran, like he like took off. He like walked away really fast and, and, and it looked like he was leaving the bar and I was stuck with the shaved head guy and I'm talking to him and he, and he's talking about how a civil, how civil wars are important and how like the blood, the, the f blood of, or the, the soil of freedom needs to be fertilized with the blood of patriots and traitors alike or something like that. And, um, and I told him, I said, well, um, just so you know, if you try to start a, a, a civil war, then we're not going to fight you. We'll just kill you. Like, we'll just kill everyone. Like, we'll just, like, absolutely, like, release a biological weapon and kill everyone. And so, after that, that guy left. And then I, I, I like, he he's like, I have to go do something. And then I, I was like, this is bad. This is a bad situation. I'm getting out of here. Because bad situations had been popping up a lot. For like, for like, ever since I started mentioning Donald Trump being blackmailed, like it seemed like everyone was trying to set me up, like would like try to provoke me to get into a fight, like being like, like like basically like like, like call me a little bitch, like out of nowhere it's like well, why are you calling me a little bitch? Like I, I haven't even met you, like you're like randomly calling me bitch, like because people try to provoke you instead of it's, it's weird how how um, noble cops are, like cops don't want to just fight you usually unless, so when I was 14 years old I ran away from home because, feds asked me to run away from home. They all, they all, they always wanted me to run away from home and drop out of school. Um, I'm talking about federal agents that work for the government that are, were targeting middle school kids. So when I was a little kid, this random like grown man just like, just start 
punch me in the face out of nowhere. Like over and over again, I'm like sitting there and I'm watching TV and then out of sight, like out on, in the side of the head, he just starts wailing on me. And then I was like, I was like you're not gonna hurt me because I stopped, I blocked it finally, but I was 14, he was like 26 or 28 or something. He was like, I'm telling you, he was a FBI agent. Like after he beat the shit out of me and I, I stopped and I was like, let's go outside and fight. And he, he didn't want to go outside and fight. I was like, yeah, let's go out in public is what I said. I said, I was like, cause we were at a hotel um, at, at, in Colorado Springs at Academy and I-25. Okay, so um, basically that guy was beating the shit out of me cause he didn't like me. And like, you, but usually the cops will like try to provoke a fight. Uh, like when I was in Santa Barbara, I was doing a hunger strike. I'm sitting on the floor and I'm like, my dog is cuddling with me. My dog's in my sleeping bag. And this guy starts accusing me of like, of, of, of hurting my dog. I was at the library waiting for the library to open because I, I was literally starving myself. I was like 20 days, 15 days into a hunger strike or something. And this guy said, get up, fight me, get up, fight me. And I was like, I'm not getting up. I didn't have a weapon. And that's why never, ever again will I ever not be strapped. Um, when I, when I hear these people talking about the cops not needing guns, it's like, all right, maybe they don't need a gun in a holster. Maybe they need a concealed firearm because concealed firearms, you're less likely to reach for. Um, if it's in a holster, apparently you're quick to draw it out. I don't know. Um, but I do think that, um, if, a, if an, if an active shooter starts shooting, it'd be nice that, um, if cops could have guns in addition to civilians, because I feel like. In, in the United States, who, who's most likely to shoot an active shooter, an, a civilian, but um, don't you kind of want cops to be involved? That's, that's, a side, I'm, that's a side thing. All I'm saying is, um, this is why I, I think that the Austin bomber was the Austin bomber. Um, getting to why I really think. So after this all happens, Huffington Post writes a story. And the Huffington Post has a story that says that um, the person who talked to the press about the Austin Bombers homeschool group was lying. The homeschool group is not a survivalist group. They don't go to the forest and shoot guns. They have water balloon fights. If you like actually look at their itinerary, they, 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 they go bowling. They're a real, a regular church group there. And, and who's from a regular type church group? Me, who went to homeschool prom in Texas? Me. All I'm saying is like, it makes sense that they'd want to frame one of us. And yeah, that's, that's, that's reality. Um, the government will murder and frame someone for terrorism to hide my existence because my existence is enough to put a large amount of top government officials in prison. I'm talking about people like probably Kamala Harris. She probably is going to be in prison. Um, like, like, like very in prison, maybe hung by the neck. Um, people like Joe Biden, people like Bill Clinton, um, People like possibly Barack Obama, um, people um, like um, Jim Mattis and John Kelly, and um, possibly even John Ratcliffe, even though he's new. I, I, I'm pretty sure that he, if you're, if you're in on a situation involving blackmail of the president of a national security nature especially, but then you're in charge of national security, yeah, you're gonna hang by the neck. Um, we, we, we cannot allow people to blackmail the president.